to the police commission, I think that apology needs to come the other way around, quite frankly. Uh, I made one mistake. That morning, I got a very demanding email from Mr. Pearl saying, what is your source? And I said, you know, I've been a proponent of open communication, so I'm just not going to send an email back. I'm going to call him. And I said, Mr. Pearl, I'd like to speak to you off the record. He gave me a very curt response. I said, oh, no, you can't do that. So when he asked me what my source was, I denied it. That was my mistake. Uh, I think that was my only mistake. Uh, I should have said I cannot divulge my source. But I'm not enough of a politician to have done that. Uh, I wish I would have. To be called dishonest is discouraging. Uh, I was, it was an ethical dilemma that I had that morning. I had to make some decisions. I had the best interest of the town and hooks it in mind. And when I said I would do it all over again, yes, I would do it all over again, except I would tell Mr. Pearl, perhaps in a little stronger language, that I cannot divulge my source. Uh, when I was concerned about the way it was going, uh, obviously, I talked to the chief. I called him back to confirm it, to make sure we had the right information. As it stated in the minutes, uh, Dr. Shanko was out of the office. He asked me to dictate a, a, a message on that because I thought it was important to get it out. So that was a decision I made uh, in the heat of battle. If I had to do it all over again, I would do just that. It was not politically driven. I think, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Lazat talks about he understands the politics of this town. I don't understand the politics of this town. But right now, this is a political issue. And this issue belongs with the police commission, not with the town council. So I would encourage you to uh, make a decision on how you would like to proceed. I will respect that decision, and we will go from there. Thank you. Mr. Pearl, and if you could keep it brief, we're headed for an hour on this. Um, but I would um, certainly um, ask you to, to not repeat yourself, but to uh, say what you feel is important after the discussion. I will. Um, <clears throat> I have never spoke to the intent of Mr. Syrek, and I don't doubt his intent. I've only spoken to the actions his official actions as the town council chair. I've kept it to that. I have never been hostile to him or demanding of him. The email that he refers to, I cc'd him on it because I was posting on my blog about him. And it's my practice to cc people if I don't think they're reading the blog so that they know what I'm saying. I did not demand an answer from him. I put out my deduction that I believed that his information came from the chief. Based on the content of that email, I made that deduction. He called me, and he did not deny the information. I asked him the question, did you get the information from the chief? And he said, no. And I said, well, then where did it come from? And we entered into a half an hour conversation of which I listened patiently as he described his building this assumption from all of his knowledge of the situation. I asked him three times to clarify this. I did tell him that we were going to be on the record. I wasn't crass about it. He said to me, I'd like to discuss something with you off the record. I said, Bill, I won't do that. Being fair to him that anything he was going to say, I may repeat. I confirmed with him three times that he got the information based on his assumption of the knowledge of the events. I came to this council and repeated that story in front of Mr. Syrek, and he never said no. He never indicated anything. He let this council, I believe, believe that that was true, along with me. So to say that there's been an apology, um, I would disagree. He. All I'm hearing from this council is not a dispute of the facts, but an acceptance of them. That concerns me deeply. Mr. Syrek was dishonest. If you want to read the minutes, I think you're going to find that that is true. That is not a personal attack. That is a fact that is in your record, not mine. This is not my opinion. I ask you 
to read the, you were here at that meeting at the end of the 26th, I wasn't. I've listened to the tape, I've, I've read the minutes. It clearly shows to me that he did not tell the truth. Now, if you're willing to accept that, that is your, that's your vote. I am not willing to accept that, and I'm not willing to accept that based on all of the good things that he has done for this town. We have to look at the facts. We have to judge it on this. I don't think we should look at intent. I think we should look at the actions. And when I was dabbled down, to, to be clear, you all voted to allow me to speak at the 12th meeting. But let's not forget, I was gaveled down at the end of my speech. As I was saying, Mr. Cyrick made a false statement, I was gaveled down for that. But, as we know now, that was true. I knew it was true, and he knew it was true. Yet he gaveled me down. And I can understand why the rest of you might not know it was true and thought maybe it was going too far. But that was irresponsible of him gaveling me down when he knew that statement was true. So if you're willing to accept these facts, and I ask you to look at your own record, I would be willing to say, don't even consider the words in that complaint that are written by me. Just look at your own record of the 26th. And if you're willing to accept that and support that person as your leader, that's your choice, but it wouldn't be mine. Thank you. Discussion? Can we, uh, is it, I don't want to stifle uh, the discussion, but if there's no one else wanting to add to this discussion, uh, and I don't want to get uh, I would like to move speak. It. Can we, can we move We can it? after I speak. I, I've okay. sat here very patiently, but I would like to open it to the floor again. Yeah, uh, you know, Chairman Syrak, uh, you know, saying I, I, I've presented that he's dishonest. Or, and what I'm going to say is, uh, I didn't do anything. The minutes indicated. Okay? So let's get that fact straight. The next fact is that he's on some political agenda. I didn't intimate that he was on a political agenda. I was all he was stating is the facts of, of uh, that's been laid out here. There's uh, other observations that ultimately we're going to have to face that are outside of this, um, this and, um, and, and they'll have to be brought forward at some point. But once again, this goes to, you know, that um, either we're going to step forward as a, a board and uh, that states that the ends justify the means and go down that road or we're going to say that we're a board of, of ethics and code. And it's, 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 it's difficult. Um, there's opportunities for reconciliation, I agree. And going forward, if the board votes in, in a manner in which to uphold it, I, I have no problem following um, uh, in the best interest of the town and best interest of, uh, of the taxpayer. But I'm going to just say, for me to get that memo memorialized in order to protect the, the uh, town administrator and the taxpayers, I'm going to just say that I allowed the lesser of the documents to be added into that, those minutes because of the good of the town. The fact of the matter is, I do not understand why someone won't memorialize information to protect the town. Okay? I understand, I understand everyone's position on this, that this was a simple, a simple issue. But the reality of it is, is that it was a simple issue on September 23rd in the morning, and it deflagrated into a major situation today. That's all I'll leave, leave you with. Last chance. If I'm well. Make it short. Uh, I believe it has been memorialized in the minutes of the 26th. Um, 
Beyond that, oh, I just lost track. Can, can, can I just want to come back in a second? I just lost what I was going to say. Anyone else? I'll hit Benny and then Susan. I think the town administrator did an excellent job in drafting a media policy for all of us to adhere to. And I think that policy that he drafted and we approved will alleviate this whole problem. Everything goes to him before it hits the media. And as for the ethics of Mr. Syrak, I think he has the highest standards of ethics in the short time that I've known him. I want to thank the chairman for speaking. This, I'm sure, is very difficult, and I think it takes a lot of courage to sit in that seat and maintain composure. Uh, he, you did say one thing. He said one thing that concerns me, and that is that um, he would do it again. And we're talking about honesty. We're talking about full disclosure, we're talking about transparency. It, in hindsight, we realize that, I hope he realizes that this, it was not his role to release a statement to the press. He did, realizing oh, I should, that that wasn't the correct proper procedure, he, I hope, I believe he has apologized for it, I'm losing track of everything that's being said. But the fact that he said that he would do it again, concerns me because he the pr proper procedure was not followed and to say that he would do it again that's concerning to me. Um, Mr. Lebeck and then Mr. Donald. I think what he said that he would do it again <coughs> you're taking out of context that he would do it again and then tell Mr. Pearl it's none of your business where I get my information from. Um, I, I, I think we have a policy now with the town administrator on how to release information. Um, had that been in place when this happened, yeah, I think we would have a greater, a better output, I mean, outcome. But at that time, it wasn't in place. We learned from our mistakes. And this, was this a mistake or not? I don't know. Maybe it was. But we, we'll probably learn something now. And to, um, Call Mr. Syrak's uh, honesty on this, I, I think, is uh, and the, the fact that he'd do it again. I think he said he'd do it again for the principle of it and with a different answer to Mr. Burrow. And uh, I still feel that this is being blown out of proportion a lot more than it's, it's worth. What would we do if we had something serious that happened? And that's all I have to say. Thank you. I'll be brief given the lateness of the hour. Um, I, I, I want to echo something Mr. Levesque just said in, in that in any situation I try to look at, whether it's professionally, personally, or here at the council, is, is what led up to the events and what can we learn and take away from that. In, in the aftermath of this situation, what have, what have we discovered? Number one, we now have a, a media policy that's very clear. Um, the police commission now notifies me via email when they're going to go into non-public session, so then I can inform all of you, hey, just a heads up, in case something comes out, this is what's going on. I've had